Just a quick update video today to talk through Games Workshop's new hints as to the balanced data slate coming tomorrow. They've confirmed a few points and rules changes, and I thought it could be entertaining to look over one dodgy supposed leak. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where hopefully it's going to be really quite an interesting time in 40k tomorrow, with big points and rules updates on the way from Games Workshop. There's definitely quite a lot of hype on the way from the recent balanced data slate that they've announced. They had confirmed there were points changes coming for 40k armies really quite a long time ago, though it sounded like their initial plan was not really to make any big rules updates with this one, and instead save them till the next update in January. Earlier in the week though, Games Workshop confirmed that there will indeed be an entire balanced data slate coming, so points changes and rules changes at the same time, and I do think it's probably sensible given that there's quite a lot of armies in the game that really points updates I think aren't going to be the best way. You'd have to increase some units just massively to compensate for some rules, and on the lower end of the spectrum probably decrease some units to fairly silly levels to make them good, whereas what's probably needed is some overall rules for the armies toning up or down. Definitely a lot of hype around this one, as a whole load of people are interested in 10th 40k and the changes that they've made, but there are some pretty ridiculous power disparities between the armies to the extent where you're probably never going to win with a bottom army versus one of the top ones. Obviously I'll be looking forward to that tomorrow and will aim to cover it in full. If they do go heavy on things, there's probably going to be worth a fair few follow-up videos as to points and rules changes. In the meantime though, I thought I'd just make this quick video to talk about Games Workshop's soft rules confirmations that they've made via social media and also cover one fairly dodgy supposed leak that's been doing the rounds. The first rules confirmations I do think genuinely does give us some new information as to what sort of things to expect, whereas the rules leak, as we'll talk about in a second, I would guess is probably fake, but has a few interesting things that I thought will be interesting enough to talk over, and doesn't seem so out of the realm of possibility that it isn't something that Games Workshop couldn't come out with. First up are the Games Workshop social media hints that they've been dropping. Basically when they announced the balanced data slates on Monday, they didn't really do it as a Warhammer community post or anything like that. It was mainly just a few lines of text on their news ticker on the Warhammer community site, and a couple of posts on their social media, Facebook and Twitter, although I suppose it's technically X now. Most of the time for actual rules, hints and reveals, I feel like their social media replies tend to be very low yield. They do tend to reply to a subset of comments, but then generally just say things like we'll have to wait and see, or let you know on Warhammer community if we have any news or please message that rules query to the FAQ team if you think you've spotted something that they need to take a look at. Just occasionally though, they do seem to be licensed enough to drop some pretty heavy hints as to what's coming. Just from past model reveal shows and things, where we basically kind of already knew what was coming anyway, they tend to go a bit stronger and say, oh yes, that could definitely be a possibility this week. Maybe a slightly subtle change in language, but a fairly important one. I think the last thing that they really want to do in those sort of things is build up false hype and then just have people come to the thing and be disappointed when say they've just been teased by rules changes that don't wind up happening. Obviously it's all very unofficial and definitely not officially confirmed until the actual update comes out, but I did notice that a fair few of their balanced data slate ones did seem to be unusually specific and basically confirmed a few things and denied some others, and basically soft confirmed some armies that are going to be getting either points changes or rules changes. First up, and perhaps one of the ones that I'm most interested to hear about are the Tyranids, given that they've basically got their codex coming out the same week as the balanced data slate, so there's a bit of a question as to how the Tyranids really fit in. When they were asked in one post if there were going to be changes to the Tyranid Codex, and asking if there were going to be sections that were invalidated or changed, they have confirmed that the latest balanced data slate doesn't cover the upcoming Codex Tyranids, so I guess that's quite nice to know that there's a confirmation that they aren't going to be making any major changes to that right from day one, I suppose. Not really unexpected, that one, and I suppose there's still possible that Tyranids could be caught by certain general changes, say if they decided to mess around with indirect fire somehow, or do something with secondary scoring of OC0 units, neither of which are definitely guaranteed or anything, but don't seem out of the realm of possibility. The balanced data slate is the bit that covers the rules changes, but it is a separate thing to the Munitor and Field Manual, and it seems that on another post over on Twitter, they basically said that some points changes would be happening for the Tyranids as far as they're aware. I'm really a bit unsure as to where it's going to shake out, as the points section in the codex is quite different to the Munitor and Field Manual, a bunch of units are wiggled up or down a little bit, mainly points drops for the most part, though a few of them do reflect rules nerfs that have gone alongside them. It's quite nice in Codex Tyranids, they have been kind of pragmatic and it comes with a QR code and an explanation that points get updated digitally next to the points section in the codex. Kind of nice to give them just a little bit more license to say yes, these will change and these ones in the codex probably won't be the official ones for long. 
I think it's good to set that expectation when people do get the codex. Might just temper the expectations of the crowd of people who always seem to get surprised when Games Workshop makes digital updates to their physical print offerings. It's going to be pretty interesting to see exactly how far they go with the Tyranid Codex. I feel like maybe one of the things that's perhaps the highest likelihood to get changed might be the Bioball. This guy was 45 points when the Index dropped. He went up to 65 points as part of the Indirect Fire nerf. And part of that might be paying for his ability to put down spore mines and score objectives easily. And then the codex had him revert to just 45 points again and also get some significant stat line buffs for the new model as well. It just feels like if he's basically having a similar sort of utility and arguably even better, at least if you just take one of them, he could easily be a candidate to go back up to 65. And even if he did do that, I still think that one by of all would be absolutely auto include for competitive Tyranid lists throwing those spore mines around to score points. It might just be as little as that going up. I feel like it probably makes sense for them to be kind of light touch though, just so they don't confuse everyone when people get Codex Tyranids and have a completely different points section online to in the book. Otherwise, they confirmed two points changes for two struggling factions, the Adeptus Mechanicus and Grey Knights. I feel like if they didn't do points changes to these, then that would be kind of a surprise though. They're quite clearly well out of Games Workshop's ideal target zone of 45 to 55% tournament win rate, much further down hovering around the 40% mark, so it'd be kind of a surprise if these didn't get buffs in some way. I'd kind of hope that the Adeptus Mechanicus might get something from the balanced data slate itself in terms of rules changes. Games Workshop did say that they're getting just non-specific good changes and didn't specifically say just points with that one, where Grey Knights they were a little bit more specific and just said they will definitely be seeing some points changes. That might make a bit more sense with the Grey Knights with their massively powerful teleport tricks and just incredibly overcosted data sheets. If they became a bit more efficient then they could maybe have a lot more players a high skill army that can actually punch up well if you use their movement tricks to the maximum, though I suspect we'll probably still be struggling in direct fights against enemy heavy armour. Finally, and perhaps the most specific one of all, are the Leaguers of Votan hints that they dropped. Someone commented saying, I love my Votan, they need some oomph or something. I don't know if it's points or a tweet to judgement tokens. Whereas Warhammer 40k replied, maybe a bit of both. Check back Thursday to find out. It just seems very unlikely that they'd tease that they're getting both points and rules changes if they weren't doing so. That just seems a little bit irresponsible. I certainly feel like that would probably be the best situation for Leagues of Votan, as if you just try and balance them with literally points alone, their units are going to be massively cheap, and they're going to be feeling like a bit more of an unelite hordy army, which I don't suspect is what most players want for them. The idea of a tweak to judgement tokens is pretty interesting. I suspect people don't want to see them go back to the days of auto-wounding everything on a 4+, plus with their basic troop weapons, but at the moment the current ones do feel kind of underpowered, not quite as easy to come by as they were in 9th edition, and it feels like the first one is only just starting to get them back to their standard efficiency, hitting on a 3+, plus, which they had last time round, and it only actually gets into a buff if you get onto the second judgement token, which gives them plus 1 to wound. Not sure what they'd do on top of that, there are a whole ton of ways that you could buff damage a little bit more, rerolls, AP, or sustained or lethal hits, or just make the tokens a bit easier to hand out to the enemy, maybe some sort of tweak to their detachment rules to make it a bit more meaningful. Finally, and just for a bit of entertainment, I thought it could be interesting to cover one definitely dodgy leak that's been circulating around on Discord. I've seen this one pop up on a whole bunch of different Discord servers already, and it reports to know a bunch of changes for the balance day slate, including some specific points and model changes to the custodies. Just from an initial glance at the changes, my guess would be that it's probably fake, as a few of them seem a bit unlikely to me. Supposed leaks like this are very, very easy to make up, and whether they're real or fake, they tend to get circulated quite widely for people who are eager to see details of a balance update. So I'd certainly take this with an absolute mountain of salt, and either not to get stressed out about it at all, or just don't watch if you're not interested. I think they're interesting or entertaining enough to talk about just for the ideas that they propose though. Plus this one does seem to have been circulated quite extensively, I've had it sent to me by three different people at this point. Given that this is very unconfirmed, I'm not going to dwell too much on it, but supposedly the leak says that mortal wounds now won't spill over to further models, and that would be really quite a big change to how 40k operates in general. They've been the way that they are since 8th edition started. The idea is that if you just get hit by a boatload of mortal wounds, it's just going to chip off at one wound after another until you lose a model and then continue to work on the next one after that. I feel like to stop them spilling over would kind of defeat the point of them a little bit, they're supposed to be a bit of a great leveller and equally effective against just about any unit, though if that is the case it is kind of something that Games Workshop really needs to make sure that they're not letting any army have too much access to. I feel like quite a lot of the balance issues in Warhammer 40k come from when an army gets overly easy access to mortal wounds, 
We've already had arguably the most broken combo out of the gate in 10th edition with the Death Watch anti-infantry mortal wound spam, and one of the more problematic interactions for Eldari at the moment is plugging Fate Dice into automatic 6 devastating wounds, then blasting through something whether it's a vehicle or a big squad. I guess arguably this would go some way to fixing things like heavy wraith cannons being able to shoot down entire units with a devastating wound hit, but I feel like it's perhaps just nerfing a whole load of things throughout 40k to try and tackle one thing that's the main problem. I can't help but think that a focus fix for that could be a bit better than that. Overall, I'd say it seems unlikely, though not entirely impossible. I'd guess that something like a more limited version of this, like maybe saying devastating wounds from high-power anti-tank weapons not spilling over, might make more sense. But still, that would feel like a bit of a weird exception to a rule that generally works okay, provided they keep each instance of it in balance. Otherwise, for other things claimed by the League, they say that free stratagems from things like captains could only be used on battle tactics type stratagems, which seems like a bit of a peculiar one to me. Currently, a lot of stratagems in 10th edition do have those kind of riders on, but they seem to be a bit more of a lore and feel type thing as opposed to a gameplay type mechanic. That would be a bit weirdly limiting to things like captains and overlords and things at the moment, which I feel like at the moment are often very highly incentivized to have one in the army, but still have strong competition for the rest of the other characters that also bring good stuff. Besides that, they claim that there's going to be two nerfs to indirect fire, First, Overwatch wouldn't be able to be used if you don't have line of sight to your targets. I feel like that one maybe feels like a pretty reasonable one to me. It's maybe a bit weird moving within range of an artillery piece and then just having the enemy fire Overwatch at you whether they can see you or not. I suppose you could claim it to be, say, artillery laying down suppressive fire if you wanted some lore explanation. But if that were the case, it's still a bit weird as it's limited to 24 inch range, which is abnormally close for artillery. Otherwise, they say that there's going to be an often speculated change of switching around indirect fire again, just to be minus one to hit and minus one AP, rather than giving the target the benefit of cover as it is now. That will be a further big nerf to indirect fire, and if it were true, it would stack with any cover that the target had normally, and I'm sure it will be a replacement to the current rule if it were accurate. That one to me, though, feels like it's just a bit pointless, really. Quite a lot of artillery in the game is very niche already at the way it's balanced, and it kind of doesn't really matter exactly what system you have for artillery firing. It's still going to depend on the points for each individual artillery piece, not to be either overcosted or undercosted. And I feel like the current system of being minus one to hit and giving the target the benefit of cover works kind of fine to make it a little bit more tempting to shoot directly if you can. Otherwise, the very unconfirmed dodgy text leak says that there's going to be some supposed squad size changes. This in particular strikes me as a bit off. GW doesn't usually tend to rebalance armies by altering squad sizes, which would mean alterations to the data sheets, not when they can achieve similar sort of things by changes to points. The first two it mentions here, besides some custodies ones, are changes to desolation marines being capped at squad size 5 and exaction squads going to 10 men only neither of which I think are necessarily unreasonable changes. Desolation Marines are still very competitive in the right army, though in general they're much, much stronger in Death Watch at the moment, with access to anti-infantry 2 plus for 1 CP. For the rest of the armies, they maybe feel strong if they're built around with things like a Bolter Discipline Apothecary in the unit, but they do cost an awful lot of points for the privilege now. I guess capping them to squad size 5 would certainly limit stratagem or warlord trait efficiency on them, and would make them a lot more limited, but I do find it a bit unlikely that they'd be wanting to mess around fundamentally with Codex Space Marine units unless this is a change that's already planned to be happening in the new Space Marine Codex, which we know is coming out at least fairly soon. For exaction squads, I'd strongly suspect that they will get changed in some way due to just being basically auto-include for just 35 point units to do actions and objectives. I feel like they're a unit that could easily go up to 10 man only given that the Vigilators and the Subductor type squads are. Though again, I feel like it's absolutely something that they could just fix with points if they wanted to, just make them cost a little bit more. Otherwise, the Text League also claims some changes to Custodies, which I feel like at this point is probably pretty likely anyway. These are basically small points increases that affect the vast majority of their competitive units at the moment, besides apparently the Caladius Grav Tank still at 215 points. Regardless of whether or not this is accurate, I feel like it's very likely that the Custodians will probably see some points increases. They're still managing a 55% win rate despite the brutally oppressive Eldari out there in the meta. And it's a huge uphill struggle for many other factions in the game to play against them with their enormous stats and massive melee. Again, this source is claiming some squad size changes for Custodian Guard and Wardens. Again, maybe that maybe isn't the most unreasonable thing in the world. You can make perhaps an unusually large sized squad of Custodian Guard, to the extent where you can perhaps get some surprising efficiency with characters and stratagem boosts for them. 
and the Wardens have had a very weird unit size since the new points came out. For some reason you're able to fill them in squad sizes of 3 and 6 when they come in a box of 5, so the squad size they have at the moment isn't really reflective of anything, so I think it is very possible to, that they get changed around to have a max squad size of 5. They also do claim that bites go down a little bit, which wouldn't be the worst in the world. They are very underpowered relative to the rest of the index. In any case, vague teasers and potentially dodgy leaks aside, very much looking forward to the balance data slate tomorrow. I'll look forward to covering it here on the channel as soon as we get news. Look forward to hearing your thoughts on the teasers and your hopes and fears for the update. Let me know your thoughts on them down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k updates coming with new videos out just about every day. And finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel quite a bit, any support on the Patreon page is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.